my sins. Show me those things that I need to repent of. Because there's going to be some that are there. And if he's shown you one and you haven't repented of it, you are on dangerous ground because you are giving ground to the enemy. You are giving ground to the enemy. And when you do, he has more rights to assail you than you would have had you not done that. It's called a slippery slope. But Satan has rights. If you start sinning, Satan has more rights to attack you. Oh, I guess I can't do it. All right, let's take one more example here. This is an example where the test was failed. But the out and the out we can still learn from the outcome. All right. You all know where I'm going. Genesis chapter three. We got we can go in there and I'm just gonna do some thinking and then I'll be done. Uh, talk out loud with you here. Most pivotal event in history perhaps before the cross, because it caused the fall and necessitated the cross. All right, now Eve's test. We know before Eve actually went there, both Adam and Eve had been already, uh, they had been warned. Ellen White says that they, the Lord had sent angels to explain to them, all right, who Satan was. Uh, set this down for a second. Before the test, Ellen, uh, Ellen White knows that they had good instruction from the Lord. The angels went down to them. They were told that there's an enemy. He's real. He's powerful. He was cast out of heaven, and he'll meet you at that tree. He will take your life if you let him, all right? And don't eat from the tree. They had known this time and time again. So did Eve understand her one law? Was it not clearly stated? Do we understand the Ten Commandments? They're clearly stated, okay? So uh, the question comes about, before Eve actually went to the tree, both Adam and Eve had already sinned. All right? First of all, Eve entertained the idea of going to the tree. That's when she got the high. That's when she got the high. I think I'm going to go in and see what that tree's all about. I know God. I'll be safe. Yeah, I, I'm strong. I'll be safe. I, I'm a match for Satan. You've ever been there? It's called face plants. It's kind of like when I used to go snow skiing. I had two speeds, wide open or plying the snow with my goggles. You ever done it? You're, 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 you're falling, you're sliding, you can see the snow going by your goggles? Yeah. <laughs> You've been there? Yeah, I am. Uh, my orthopedic surgeon says, uh, you fall hard, you don't get up. So and give up a few things like jumping out of airplanes, mm -hmm. which I've never done. All right, so she entertained, first of all, the sin. Her greatest failure was her decision to go and to leave Adam, which she'd been specifically told not to do, that they were to stay together. She also sinned in ignoring God's command to stay by Adam. But Adam also sinned and that he let her go. Was he supposed to be her protector, spiritual leader? So, so the next question gets to be the kind of the same one I've asked before. So Eve understood the one law. Could God have kept Eve from going to that tree that day? Yes. Certainly. Uh, could he have for example, giving her an extra warning. Hey, you, I know what you're thinking. Don't go there. Does God do that for us? Perhaps sometimes, but not, not audibly. Exactly. Exactly the point. We have a free will, so we have a choice. So, despite knowing what's going on uh, and what could happen to her, it was her destiny, and it was beset by what she did. Eve was therefore allowed, oh man, alright, 
God does not stop it. First of all, because of God's free will. And here's the key. She had to stand on principle. She had to stand on what she knew, what she had been told. She had to stand on the Word of God. It's her decision and her destiny lies in the balance. Here's the deal. Eve faced a superior enemy. Would you say that? Do we face a superior enemy? What are our chances of surviving on our own? Zip. Okay. So, here's the bottom line on all of this. Christ is waiting with longing desire to form in us his character. His character is not easy. He doesn't give it to you instantly. He will give you the strength to stand, to stand the test. He'll give you the faith that needs to stand the test if you have done your prep work when you get there. But if you have a habit of making compromises with sin, if your life is not in, in, in tune with the Lord, he won't suddenly convince Forgive all your sins, and even though the ones you have to confess, and suddenly make you strong to pass the test. He won't. So the bottom line is, we have to develop characters. How long do we have to do this? Possibly very short time. It's going to be get harder and harder and harder to recognize truth. All right. So. All right, I'm just going to close with this one, one, thought, one last thought. I asked this question at 2 o'clock. I'll ask it again. If we keep doing what we're doing right now, will things be any different in two years, two months? Don't answer that out loud, but... Well, will, it be, will we be more close... Well, let me rephrase. We'll be closer to the Lord in two months if we keep doing the same thing we're doing right now. Right, so that's a question for you to answer for yourself. I'm not asking for an open answer to that. It's an appeal. It works this way. We need to draw together. We need to have an upper room experience. That means we have to draw together as a group. We have to pray together as a group. We need to pray for each other. We need to edify each other. We've got to grow. We've got to make sure we each grow. I'm willing to be accountable to any of you. If anybody wants to be my accountability partner, I'll accept that if you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one back and forth accountability situation. It's a great way to solve problems. But you see where I'm going? I'm asking for a change. I don't know what change is needed. I don't know whether there's anything corporately needed in the church or not. I know I need a change in my life. And I know I need your help. I need your prayers. I covet your prayers. Any last thoughts? I've gone a little long. I sound decided I kind of sound like an old Baptist preacher up here a little bit. <laughs> Are we good? Y'all still friends? You allowed me to meddle just a little bit? <laughs> or a bunch is the case? Let's close with a prayer. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for loving us when we are so unlovable. Thank you, Lord, that you see us as you're going to make us, not as we are now. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not what I was. But, Lord, I look forward to seeing what I will be as you continue to remake my life. Guide our thoughts, Lord. Bless the fellowship time tonight. It all will be good, wholesome fun and lots of laughter. We praise your name and thank you for loving us so much. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.